Hello everyone. So today let us learn how to create a project using a script runner for Jira on cloud. By the way, I have covered this uh, project creation using a script runner for Jira on server slash data center. And I have also covered this how to do it using automation rules. For example, if you want to, to create some kind of self service portal where uh, your uh, users will uh, raise a ticket for project creation. They will enter the project name or project key, whatever. And then maybe you want to create the project automatically for them. That can be done using automation rules. So go to my website ravisaga.in and find that video. And then uh, I've also shown how to do it using uh, nothing but uh, shell scripts. So yes, there are a lot of possibilities when it comes to project creation. And today I want to basically use script now for Jira on cloud because uh, Many people are now moving towards cloud and uh, to be honest, I haven't really made a new video on a script runner for Jira in the last couple of months. So I thought I'll probably, you know, create more videos. I mean, to be honest, I already have like hundreds of videos just on script runner. And if you go to my website, ravisaga.in, you will find uh, all the courses, all the videos that I have been creating. They're all free and uh, they will always be free. So if you're watching this video and if you're new to my channel, please subscribe. I basically create uh, free videos for everyone, world class videos, by the way. <laughs> and uh, uh, today I thought I'll probably just uh, show you this example, because uh, I know a lot of people are interested in doing something similar. And if you're thinking whether, for example, when people are moving towards, because a lot of people are moving towards cloud, they want to know, how can we do this? How can we achieve this automation? Can we use a script now? So yes, script now can do a lot of wonderful things. And uh, in this video, I'm going to present a very simple example, but useful one. So what I will do is, uh, and by the way, if you're new to script runner for Jira, what you can do is you can always uh, take a look at these uh, examples. For example, if you want to, let us say, create uh, a task. So you can actually use uh, this example and it will actually give you this script. And the way script now for Jira works on uh, cloud, it's basically using uh, REST API. So if you want to learn Jira REST API, you can take a look at my Mastering Jira Cloud REST API playlist. And I have covered a lot of examples. But if you are uh, familiar with uh, Jira REST API, then writing a Groovy script is actually very simple. So these examples will help you a lot when it comes to using a script now for Jira. But of course, uh, my videos are the best, right? So watch my videos if you want to learn more about uh, script now for Jira. And uh, Today, I'll, throw, I'll probably show you this simple example, which is basically going to create a project. Now to create a project, all we need to do, and if you look at the script, the script is actually very simple. And this is how I, I, I try to work. I try to use uh, examples that are easy to follow and simple. So when you make a REST call, so by the way, to create a new project, I will show you first uh, the endpoint that I'm using. So the endpoint is basically this one, REST API 3 and then uh, project. And you have to pass a few details, basically the body of that request. So to create a project, uh, I will be using uh, this uh, endpoint. And by the way, this is the playlist, Mastering Jira REST API. So if you go to maybe this particular video, create project using shell script, you will actually find uh, the you know details, which of course I'm going to do anyways in this video as well. But uh, I also have the code and a working example. So you can actually learn about how it works. So this is one of the example, right? You can take a look at, I mean, this is my, um, my uh, repository. So let us, uh, let us go back to the script. And this script is basically because we have, when we create, uh, when we have to create a project, you have to pass in, of course, the header, which is, you know, application slash JSON, that is the body. And because we are using Groovy, you have to pass it like this. And the main thing here is that you have to pass in the key. So this key should be unique. Um, I mean, if you try to use uh, the same key, it won't really work. Let us do that. So if I do, if I probably run this again, I'll probably come back to this uh, code. I, but before error, before let me try to run, run this. So if I run this, hopefully it will give me an error because I know there is a project. So it says here at the very bottom project name, project with this key, or that name already exists. So what we need to do, we need to, of course, uh, give this a new name or a new key. And then uh, we have to specify the project type key. And then we have to specify the template. So this is something that you can easily find out 
when you are going to the when you go to the Atlassian, Jira, Cloud documentation, you can find these details. And to create a project, you are, you also need the lead. Uh, basically, every project need to have a lead, and uh, it has to be the account ID. And then, of course, you can pass in the URL of if there is a URL, if there is any URL, and uh, the assignee type. So when you create a new project, you have to specify the assignee type, which is usually the project lead. I think project lead works, but uh, you also have the option to pass in few additional details, like uh, you know maybe the maybe if you want a maybe your project can have like you know the avatar and uh, you know the icon. You can actually pass this ID here. And by the way, all, all of this information can be you can find this information very easily when you uh, go to your uh, because there are endpoints. And at the, at the same time, uh, there are also uh, the admin interface. For example, if you go to the issues, and if you pass in, uh, or if you want to check the ID of a specific, let us say, custom field or whatever configuration, usually you will be able to find the ID when you hover your mouse on top of the edit. For example, if I try to edit the epic, so you will notice that the epic ID is uh, uh, one, you know, it is uh, 10,000. Let me just click on it so you can see it on top. So this is like, 10,000. So this is the ID of the issue type. But of course, in this case, in this case, we're not really using the issue type ID, we are simply using the notification scheme. So let me just try notification scheme. And again, I, I'm trying to pass few details because uh, I want to show you how it works. But you can actually pass in, uh, you can refer to the documentation, the Jira cloud, let me show you, I mean, my videos are not just about talking nonsense, I, I like to show things. So let us take a look at uh, Jira REST API and uh, while I'm doing it, I'll also show you the notification scheme because I'm trying to figure out what notification scheme I need to pass because you need to, not the permission scheme, we need to pass the notification scheme. Let me click on it. It is a bit slow to be honest today and I, I guess uh, Jira Cloud is not like server. So um, I'm trying to be, uh, I I'm trying to wait. Okay, so let us take a look at the notification scheme. And uh, let us say you have to use the dev notification scheme, right? So click on the edit. And you can see immediately that uh, somewhere on top, there should be, I believe, yes, so the scheme ID is uh, 10,008. So let us use this. Let us use this here in the, in the uh, project creation. And by the way, to learn about uh, these things, Apart from my wonderful videos, you can always go to this documentation and if you search for it, create, uh, come on, is it just this site flow or my internet is slow? Okay, so create project and if you click on the create proje project, you can actually see the details of uh, the endpoints. So what we need to do is we need to create a project. Where is it? Come on. I think I'm just uh, doing it too quickly. Okay, so where is it? Yes, this one. So basically, you can see here that we are trying to create a project using the same. So basically, the method has to be post, right? And we are doing this post here. So we are basically, so script. the way script now for Jira works, it is, uh, it uses the unirest um, library to um, make a REST call. And uh, it works quite, quite well, to be honest. So you can see here that, you know, you can uh, specify the project type key. And if you have different templates, because usually you have some templates that you can uh, use or reuse, you can specify those templates here. For example, if I'm using, uh, I mean, I basically copied this from here. So you don't have to like worry too much about it. So I'm sure you can find the template somewhere here. And uh, and you can actually see some, some working examples, hopefully, like you can pass in the, workflow scheme or issue type scheme and whatever scheme that you want to use. So in this example, let us uh, let us create the project because I believe this project key and project name should not exist. And uh, what we'll do, we'll take a look at the project. So yes, it has uh, created the project and I'll copy the copy the uh, project key and I'll go to the project and uh, I will take a look at the project. So this is something that you can easily do. It is of course a very simple example, but uh, I, I think once you know how to do simple things, then you can do advanced things, right? So don't try to overcomplicate things in the beginning. Keep it simple. 
and uh, what I wanted to show you is the notification notification scheme so let us click on notification and uh, we can see here this uh, dev project notification scheme which we used and uh, it works works really well so that is that is all that is all I wanted to, to talk about in this video I hope I hope you enjoyed watching this video and you learned something new today. Thank you very much. Bye bye.